Coming up, I was always a funny guy. I had to be funny because I graduated high school, 97 pounds, like 5'4". You know, chicks wasn't really checking for me, so I had to try to laugh him into the sack. But I've always been, like, if I'm in a room, I'm probably going to be, if not the funniest person, one of the funniest people. Coming all the way out of D.C., give it up for Donnell Rawlings! Come on! What up, D? I'm rich, bitch! My name is Donnell Rawlings, a.k.a. Ash Larry, a.k.a. Black Santa, a.k.a. Ash the God, a.k.a. I'm broke, bitch. And what I do is evoke emotion and humor into it everyday life situations and make people happy just to be happy. Barack Obama all day, every day. When you come to a Donnie Rollins show, you can expect to laugh, you can expect to um, to uh, get your mind stimulated, you know. Most of my stuff is observational comedy, you know, a little twist, kind of exaggerates. I just kind of exaggerate the daily truths that we all experience and I bring it to you where it's funny, you know. I'm not like knock knock who's there guy, but you know, I say 60% of the stuff that I do is stuff that I thought about prior to going on stage, and I try to leave my brain open for 40% 40, 40 to be improv, because you never know which direction the um, white chick's going to take you. You ever get mad at a Chinese motherfucker in a restaurant? You can't get really mad, because when they curse, the shit sound cute. You know, you want to be mad, but you want to laugh at the same time. Chinese guys get mad, they're like, you are, you are dick sucker and the asshole licker. You are lick the asshole inside. They don't say shut your mouth, like you shut the mouse. You shut the fuck a mouse. I'm the door set net tasa yosa ibliang. That's really interesting. So where, where'd you pick up Korea? In Korea. <laughs> I was in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force. I was a military police officer and I used to work with um, Korean police officers and you get bored after working 12 hours with somebody and after a while you get curious about the person's cultures and their language and you start trading off shit and that's what happened. I'm conversation level. I'm, I, I know enough where I can order food and order a massage with a happy ending and not get um, gypped with either one. The service when I was in the military was an awesome experience. You know, I went in the military when I was 17. I originally, I wanted to be an architect, but I, I thought that was too much schooling, so I said maybe I'll be a carpenter. But I kept beating myself and, and what, I kept hitting my thumb with the hammer, so that wasn't a good job. I didn't want to be like, you know, some low life is not doing anything after high school, no college, no nothing. So I said, what I did, what a lot of African American Puerto Ricans do, they join the military to try to get some stability in their life. After I got out of the military, um, uh, I was waiting to be a police officer for DC Police Academy. During that process, I used to be head of security for a chain called Safeway. It's kind of popular in this area. And um, I used to go to comedy clubs with some of my friends. And I, I was a heckler and I became a professional heckler and the club owner wanted me to be quiet so he asked him um, if I go on stage. I went on stage and uh, I've been telling jokes 14 years after that. So that's the start of it. And it won't be the end of it, but that was the start of how I started doing comedy. Then when you don't understand them, they look like they get ready to start crying. You are shut the mouth! No talk! Shut the mouth! White talk! Shut the mouth. The most traveling I did was through comedy. When I was in the Air Force, the only place I was, I went to Korea, Korea, and I went to Germany, and I was stationed at Bolton Air Force Base. So most of my massage parlor um, experiences came through stand-up comedy. And finally, from these very projects, local legend Ashy Larry. <laughs> Why do they call him Ashy Larry? Well, there's your answer. Larry, Marcy Projects, Marcy, son, what? A lot of people think that because Dave is black and I'm black, Dave's from D.C., I'm from D.C., that that was my introduction to the show. But one of his co-writers, Neil Brennan, who was doing In Living Color auditions. He was like a production assistant for In Living Color years ago. He's working behind the camera. He thought I was funny. And um, seven years uh, from the time I first met him, he wrote Half Baked with Dave. and had a lot of scripts that were optional. He made a lot of money, but he wasn't director or anything. so. He wrote a one-man little script, and I, he reached out to my manager, and he's like, you think Donald would want to do this? And I was like, okay. I didn't know the dude was already rich, so I was like, I know you can't afford to pay me, but if you're ever in a situation where you can throw me a bone, do it. And everything I was going to hear from him six months, no, four months after that, he called me and said, I'm working on the show, and I'm, what's the name of the show? And he was like, I don't know the name of the show, but I'm like, you know, I'm working on the show, and if we get it, I'm down. The show was Chappelle's show, and that was the beginning of my involvement on the Chappelle show. 
They made it dry and cool to Kente's ankle. Come on, let's go. I stole this money on my girl purse. She think I'm out emptying the trash. Working on the Chappelle show, that was one of the best jobs I ever had. It was only one, one of the only jobs where you could work 17 hours and you were laughing just as hard at the beginning of the show as you were after the show. You know, Dave is like an equal opportunist. He wasn't like a guy that, you know, had this huge ego where he wouldn't let you uh, test your comedic know-how. He would just really let you get open. And um, pretty much whatever you could add to a scene or the script or to what's going on in that moment, he lets you do it. So, you know, a little upset that we're not doing the show anymore because not too often you get a chance to work with people like that. But, you know, more power to him. God bless him and his family. And hopefully uh, one day we'll reconnect and do some amazing work. I'm about to go from ashy to classy. Ooh, and just like that, Ashy Larry is eliminated. Ouch. She gonna kill me? She should not oh. kill me. Larry, what the fuck are you doing? I was, okay, ma'am, I was emptying the trash. And that bad not be the money? Oh, my goddamn... The acting for me is more challenging. I think I'm more natural to stand-up. You know, I could do stand-up with my eyes closed, but with acting, it's just something... It's hard to build that intimacy between the camera, and that's the whole part of acting, just make-believe. But stand-up, that's my forte. I have a lot of fun doing it. Acting is the one that um, really frightens me so anytime I'm feel fear of anything I challenge it so acting is the one that's the one that makes me nervous the one but I enjoy doing the most. My future goals are to stay black and die. Uh hopefully be a part of the process, put um African American guy in the White House. And, you know, love my family. Praise the Lord. Keep it real. Smoke weed and every so often um have sex with some blonde head chicks with really long legs. I just like to say, and you see, they got young them, don't don't care. Now put my low, and they turn my low, can turn it yo. Yo ba say yo, yo ba say yo, yo ba say yo, idi wa. Money up so kada chogi, money up so hapshira haiku mangchangi. I think your um, Korean fan base will respond by text, and then they could uh, uh, explain to you exactly what I said. But it had something to do with me using my penis in a professional manner. This is Donnell Rollins and you're watching Real Black. Real Black. I'm broke, bitch! <laughs>